What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Uh, before we get to the interview, I'm actually going to go over uh, Chip's uh, YouTube channel real quick. He actually didn't say anything about it in the video for some odd reason, and I just want to give a quick shout out to it. Um, Chip does run his own YouTube channel called Trainer Chip. I'll leave a link down below. Make sure you go subscribe to it. Uh, he does a lot of box open. He does pretty much everything. As you see, there's a uh, set of moon stuff, pulls. He does a uh, little bit of gameplays as well. He does pretty much everything. If you see his like most popular video is him uh, opening up stuff, then DS and the DS. So you can see he does do a bunch of different stuff. Um, garage sale finds. He does pretty much everything and some stuff outside of Pokemon as well. Uh, so make sure you hit that subscribe button to his channel. Uh, but hopefully during this interview, it's a lot of fun talking about Mega hey, Plaza. And uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching and let's see the interview right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Today we're doing another regionals recap. And what's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Chip Ritchie. All right, and we are talking about the Athens Regionals, and right now we can see your Mega Rayquaza Jolteon Giratina deck. And yeah. my first question, like always, is why did you decide to play the deck this weekend? Okay, so leading up to the Regionals, I, for the whole week, was testing uh, some of the decks that were getting a lot of hype, like the Turbo Dark deck and the Gyarados deck, and I was also testing Greninja, just because I think Greninja is really strong, um, and I actually didn't even have Rayquaza built until like 12.30 the night before the tournament, <laughs> because like, I don't know, I just like didn't feel great about any of those decks I had been testing, and so I just decided, you know what, this is going to be a big tournament, I just need to play something I'm familiar with that is consistent, and I decided to go with Rayquaza because I've played it a decent amount in the past, so I just went with that because... Yeah, I felt like it, I was comfortable with it. I didn't even think it was like a great play necessarily. Um, I just kind of, you know, was like, yeah, I'm comfortable. We'll roll with that. So that's how I came on it. But yeah, I mean, that's always like the best advice when I get players. Like, what should I play? I'm like, what deck are you most comfortable with? I'm yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's good. I'm like, it doesn't matter if you know it's good. You know how to play it. Yeah, like for so, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's so much like at huge tournaments. Like, I mean, this is the biggest regionals ever. Like, you're gonna play a little of everything. You're not gonna be able to say you, know, you just need to play something consistent that you feel comfortable with so that's what i decided to go with yeah, that's very true all right so uh lead us through swiss how did that go and what decks do you play against all that good kind of stuff okay yeah i've got it written down here so round number one i played against actually a good friend of mine uh, chris bobo who um was playing a greninja deck and um so we start off greninja is actually it's, it's a pretty good matchup with the Promo Giratina, but it can come down to the number of Silent Lab they play. I know there were some running around that were playing for Silent Lab, um, but you really don't need a Skyfield in play until they get a breakout. So you just have to play conservatively with your stadiums and just um, you know kind of take it slow. Um, but I was able to beat him both uh, two games, 2-0. So um, that was definitely a good start to the day. And he actually ended up doing pretty well. I think he lost his winning end today too, unfortunately, but uh, he did pretty. So it was, it was uh, good to see him do well. Um, then round two, I played against David Atz, who did end up making day two. Um, he was playing Volcanian. Um, and Volcanian is actually kind of a close matchup, surprisingly. Um, if you miss, so the idea is like load up a big Rayquaza with a big bench and then Hex Emerald Break. But if you miss a turn of hitting that Hex Emerald Break, um, and they've set their board up well enough with Power Heater early on, it can be really hard. Like, they can easily come up and take a knockout on a Mega Ray. Um, but I was able to draw well enough and won 2-0 against him. Then round three, I played against John White. Um, and he was also playing Volcanian. And shout-outs to him because he was using a Waffle House menu as his playmat, which was pretty <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> But uh, so yeah, that we had a. I was sitting there while I was playing. I was trying to figure out how much a uh, All Star breakfast was going to cost me. But uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, same thing with Volcanian. Just um, I was able to draw well enough and uh, won two games to nothing. Uh, then round four, I played against Jacob Mechaber. Mechaber. I'm not sure how to say his last name, but um, I've seen his name on like uh, the online places before on the like the various Facebook groups and stuff. But um, he was also playing Greninja, and game one, this is actually the first game I dropped all day because I um, I was winning the game, and then for no reason, I sycamored with just like a seven-card deck and lost the game that way. So <laughs> I was like, I didn't even need anything. Like, my board, like, I had two Mega Rays, like, were completely powered up. I didn't need anything. I just was, like, playing my hand out and, like... I don't know. So <laughs> as soon as I did that, I was like, well, crap. And we went to game two. Um, and then in, in game two, it was actually funny. He ran a one of Wally in the deck. 
and he um i went first and end and he showed me like oh you got me i opened up with the wally and water energy and so i was like oh okay good and then we end and get back into it and then he draws back into the wally and the water energy so Jeez. he got the turn one duplicates anyway uh which was kind of funny but i ended up winning two more games against him um the giratina promo was just so good in that matchup i think he only ran two silent labs so two silent lab is really not an issue and i didn't say earlier but chris bobo he only played three i'm pretty sure so, uh, yeah, as long as you play conservative with your stadiums, um, you shouldn't, you know, like if you can get your boards, like the only time you really need to play a Skyfield is if they stick you with a Silent Lab going first and you need it to set up, of course, or um, if they've countered your stadium to turn off Giratina. So, and also really important for Greninja, um, if you can keep them from having two breaks out at one time, it's really, you know, that's really good. I mean, that's pretty much every matchup against Greninja, but... Um, like if you if if they only have two, like on the turn that they start evolving into Greninjas, if they only get two, you'll probably be okay because you know Mega Ray's going to be able to be knocking them out. And that turn they won't be taking any knockouts most likely. So since they only hit for eighty, um, so yeah, that point. Let's see, four zero, and then round five, I play against Caleb uh, Gedimer, who is playing Mega Gardevoir, and is a pretty good matchup for Rayquaza. Um, game one, we. And, you know, I just set up normally and win. And then game two, he actually almost won game two because the first, like, four... He played two Hex Maniacs, so he hexed me for the first, like, four turns of the game, and I just was, like, not able to do anything. So um, he almost stole a game off me there, but um, Rayquaza just, you know, just set up too quick after that, and, you know, I won game two. Let's see, then game, uh, round six, I played against Nick Francis, who was playing Turbo Dark, and he was not playing a Silent Lab version. Um, he was just playing Reverse Valley. And so I was able to deal with that just fine. You know, you don't really mind getting Counter Stadium to that much um, so in that one. So I won 2-0 there. And then round seven, I play against Harry Wada, um, who's a really cool guy from Texas. I've played him in other tournaments before. Um... But he was playing Evil Tall Garbodor, and um, game one I dead drew, and so I lost that one. That was the only time I dead drew in the tournament until top eight, um, which we'll, I'm sure I'll get to later. <laughs> but um, but yeah, he I dead drew. He won game two. There was like this turn where he um, so I go first, set up a little bit, um, and I didn't have any energy on the field. I'm pretty sure. And so he had a real, uh, he had a completely dead hand. Um, so he he had started Shaman, drew into an Evil Tall, benched the Evil Tall, and then um, attached to DC and Sky returned his Shaman and promoted just a lone Evil Tall. He was like, "Yep, we're just gonna risk it because like his hand was just completely dead." And so um, and then I was able to just draw what I needed to and took a knockout and benched him there. And so we had plenty of time for game three, um, but. I think he just really – he never set up a Garbodor in any of our games. And, um, yeah, I was able to just set up and win in game three. And um, I think against Harry, that was the only time I got Parallel City until top eight. So, like, I didn't see Parallel City that much, which was kind of kind of nice because that yeah. can be something that can be an issue for sure. Um, you can usually bounce back from one, but if decks are playing two, it's a little more tricky. You have to play a little smarter, but, um, and then let's see, round eight, I played against James Arnold, who also went on to make day two. We were both seven, I think we were the only seven O's left at that point, so um, we played, and um, he all, he asked to ID, but I knew it was probably pretty favorable for me, so I wanted to play it out just to get the match points for day two. Um, so we played it out, and I won 2-0 there, and then round nine, I... Uh, got paired against Dylan Bryan, who was playing Vespaquins of Striker, which is just like a terrible matchup. Like I, I don't know. I and then I ended up. So I, of course I lost, and then I had to play him again in round ten. So I got to play. I played um, him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was bad, man. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so I, I in both of our series, I was able to take a game off him. And uh, in day two in round 10, I was actually almost able to win the series. I think there was a situation where if he, like, had whiffed the – he only had one Vespaquin on the board and no other 
um, basics for his attackers, like no blitzels or combies. So if I had been able to, it was like, does he draw the energy here? And if he didn't draw the energy to win the game that turn, then I might have been able to put myself in a position where he had no attackers and I could have done something. But of course, he he drew the energy. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So yeah, let me. I kind of skipped ahead there, but yeah, round nine. I lost against Dylan Bryan, uh, unfortunately, so that's 8-1. Uh, and then uh, I was first seed going into day number two, which was really cool. A cool feeling, like the biggest regionals ever, being first seed going into day two. Um, but yeah, I know like Rayquaza is not like... Like we were talking about this beforehand, before the interview started, but um, Rayquaza is not like the most difficult deck to play necessarily. Um, you do have to like make smart decisions, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, yeah, if I know how to Ultra Ball for Hoopa and say Emerald Break, it's not that part. But. <laughs> <laughs> you say yeah. that, but I saw a lot of Mega Rayquaza players, and uh, that's true. Yeah. Not all of them made top thirty-two. <laughs> that it's a good point, I guess. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so and then it's kind of funny. So Dylan and I were the only eight ones going into day two. So I figured we were going to be playing uh, round number ten. But and one of my friends that I was staying with, Blaine, he told me like if you had ID if you had ID'd with James in round eight, you probably wouldn't have had to play Dylan twice. So I was like, oh well, crap, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I mean, I can't complain about it because you know obviously the tournament ended up pretty good for me. So you know I can't complain about the way anything went. Um, and yeah, the round ra- round nine there was there was like four other seven ones I could have gotten because I was the only eight zero. So I could have gotten any, uh, like a bunch of other seven ones and like. Jimmy um, Pendarvis, who was playing Greninja, which I think would have been favorable, or like Grant, who's playing the uh, Jolteon, Glaceon, Garbodor, Regice deck, which can be hard, um, but, you know, Grant's one of my good buddies, and we test together a lot, and I think I, you know, could have figured out a way to, like, and we played in day two, and I was able, well, we'll talk about that later, but yeah, <laughs> I would have definitely rather had those decks than the Zip Striker deck. Yeah, um, for sure. There's just really nothing you can do about how bad that matchup is, unfortunately, but... <laughs> But both times we played, I got a game off him. Um, so yeah. Then anyway, round eleven. So I'm sitting at um, eight and two. Round eleven. So I just need to win two games or two rounds, and then ID twice to be guaranteed. Um, Thirty-one points was bubble. Thirty-two was safe. Um, so round eleven, I play against Alex Hill, who was playing Greninja. Um, and uh, yeah, just the same as my other Greninja match up, matchups. The Promo Giratina is super good. I was actually really scared because he was playing the Bursting Balloons and Eco Arm. So if he can get some damage to stick and then with the bursting balloons, because I, I like I like have to take a knockout every single turn. So I'm going to have to attack into bursting balloon. There's nothing I can really do about that. True. So if he can, because uh, if I don't, if I just like pass and like let him keep his attackers, he's going to keep evolving and I'm going to be screwed in the late game. So, um, so yeah, with the eco arm too, like getting those back to continue to get damage could be scary. But um there were, I remember a key turn. <clears throat> in our first game, I only saw two Silent Labs, but I knew that some people were playing three and four. So I remember a key turn where I could have, in our second game, I could have End or Hexed, um, and I had a Skyfield out with the Giratina, but both his uh, Silent Labs were in the discard. And I was like, I'm not sure if he plays the other one, so I just decided to Hex, and then he plays the other Silent Lab down. So I was like, oh, really glad that I decided to, <laughs> really glad I decided to hex because <clears throat> he could have gotten off a lot of damage that turn. Um, and then round twelve, I played against Long Bui, who was playing uh, Glaceon, Regice, Jolteon, Garbodor deck with Lugia and Giovanni Scheme and a bunch of stuff like that. And um, I was kind of scared of the matchup because the way my deck is built right now, there's really not a lot for a lone Regice. Like you can swift them with jolteon or flash ray them just so they don't do damage to you but if they play fight like long played fighting fury belt and i know grant didn't play fighting fury belt but since long plays fighting fury belt um jolteon swift has to six shot a reg ice i'm pretty sure so <laughs> it's like really it's really bad um so i was really like not not too sure about it, but Grant had played him in day one and said that he thought he only played one reg ice so i was like oh maybe it'll be okay um, but then when we sit down, he offers the ID to me, which makes me think he's not super confident in it. So I wanted to play it out at that point. And we play it out and it, off his first search, he gets a hoopa and like just completely sets up his board with a bunch of EXs. So uh, that's like all stuff I can just Lysander and kill. So I'm like, okay, we'll be fine. So I won 2 there. Um, and then round 13, uh, went up, was paired against Alex Smetna, who was playing the Vileplume Toolbox deck. 
Um, and we're trying to figure out at this point math of like, I can just ID in, but I got down paired to him and he needs to win one to be guaranteed and he can ID one. So we're sitting down just talking about it while we're shuffling up and, um, you know, he's nervous about the matchup because he usually has to bench a lot of EXs in setup and then I can just, you know, and it takes forever for him to kill my attackers, um, because he's doing 70 to 80, like just 70 damage per turn. So... Um, so yeah, he seemed super unconfident in it, and so I offered the ID, and he took it, thankfully, um, because I just didn't want to deal with, like, getting (laughs) turn one vile plumed, and yeah, it wouldn't have been pretty, (laughs) but, um, so thankfully he took the ID, and then round 14, I play against Grant, I got down paired to him, so I'm at 31 points, um, 31 was the bubble, so 32 in ID, if I ID'd, 32 means I'm in the top eight. Um, but Grant's at 30 points, which means if he IDs, he could bubble. So, he, you know, of course, and Grant's one of my good friends, so of course we're, you know, going to play it out. And um, so we play game one, and he plays three Reg Ice in his deck, which is so oh, annoying. <laughs> um, but he, and we play one game, and he prized a Reg Ice. And so I'm able to kill one with Swift on Jolteon. Since he he didn't play Fighting Fury Belt, so I was able to four shot his uh, four shot his Reg Ice with Swift, and he you know in turn he three shots my um, Jolteon, but I got the first attack off on it, so it like worked out in my favor, like the same turn to be knocked out and stuff. Um, so, and then there was a turn where I killed his only. Um, Reg Ice, and he had a Garbodor on the bench and nothing else, so he promotes it, draws, and he doesn't have anything. Like I think he like I think he end in that turn and didn't draw another basic, and he just passed. And then I drew the like Skyfield Pokemon, or like I think I needed like a Pokemon and an Energy or something like that, and I drew both the things I needed to uh, knock out with Mega Ray. So, and then while we're setting up for game two, you know he. So I, at this point, like, I wasn't confident going in because the way my deck was built, like I said, nothing really for Lone Reg Ice. Um, and so he's, like, you know, he no, he's got, like, a weird feeling, like, if he IDs, he's going to bubble, um, which, you know, is totally fine. And then, like, I just told him there was a he, – so he started Jolteon in game two, and he ends. And while we're shuffling for the end, I say, I'll ID right now. Um, but if we draw our hands, I'm not going to ID. And so he sits there and he thinks about it, and then he agrees to ID with me because, like, <laughs> it's harder for him if he, he didn't play, like, Ninja Boy or anything like that. So if he starts Jolteon, like, you know, he's going to have to probably bench, like, Trubbishes and other things that I can Lysander and kill. So, yeah. So, yeah. And then um, I was sixth seed going into top eight. And unfortunately, Grant did miss. He was 10th seed. Yeah. He was pretty upset about it, but he lost. Um, I think his record was nine one four, so he only lost one game the whole tournament, and walked away with forty championship points. So if it, we were talking about like how you know that kind of stinks, he loses one game and only gets forty l- less points than a first place at a league cup. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but at least but, he made like what. 500 750 i don't know what it was yeah yeah. yeah i think uh i think it's 500 for top 16 and uh yeah so he he wasn't you know he wasn't upset but he just would have liked to have gone further but yeah, true yeah who doesn't yeah. yeah yeah but um so yeah and then top eight comes out i'm six seed going in like i said i'm paired up against uh chris sakala who's playing turbo dark rye and i know his list at this point like i think my friend tristan had played him and he told me he played two Silent Lab and one Parallel City. So those, you know, those stadiums are typically things that uh, are pretty hard for me to deal with, but, um, you know, I can deal with one Parallel City and then, like, two Silent Lab is not that bad. You know, I just, yeah, I win the stadium war with four stadiums, just have to play smart about it. And I'm probably going to have to just Lysander kill a Shaman at some point is my thinking going into it, so. Um, but, yeah, going into top eight, he actually had a game loss for a marked sleeve, which was really, I felt really bad for him about it too because he um, had been deck checked four times during day two and they never said anything about it. And then going into top eight, they're like, yep, this sleeve's marked. You're going to get a game loss. And like he fought it like crazy, but like there was, I don't know, I felt really bad for him because that really sucks. But, um, you know, I was going to take the free win. And uh, so, yeah, our game two, we set up and I just dead draw completely. So we're going to thir- the third game, or sec- our second game, but it's technically game three. Mm-hmm. 
and I um, was going first, and I set up pretty well on turn one. Turn two, he goes and does his thing. Um, and then on my turn two and turn three, I, like, play Sycamores. At, like, I'm playing s- cards like Supporters and, like, Shamans and stuff, and I just completely whiff energy both of those turns to take a knockout. And either not taking a knockout either of those turns would have put me, like, on par with him on prizes, and I think I would have been fine. Um, so then he goes up two to four prizes on me. I end him to two and take a knockout. He promotes the... The card he showed me like I went so he drew into VS Seeker and like some other dead card that didn't matter. Um, so he has a lys- all he needs is a Lysander and an energy to win. But he promotes the uh, his baby Oblivion Wing Evil Tall, and then he draws and the next card was an energy. So if he had promoted a Dark Rai, he just needed to attach energy Lysander to hit 120 on a Shaman. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but he, yeah, but he hit a VS Seeker, so he just Sycamores and draws a new hand, and then like Oblivion Wings for 30. So then I go, and I know he's probably got it in his hand, so I end him again, um, to keep it out of his hand, and so, um, draw, and I could have taken, so we're two to two prizes. I could have taken a knockout on his Oblivion Wing Evil Tall, but that means he needs all he has to do is promote Darkrai and um, Lysander Shaman. So I chose to just pass to not knock it out because that means he has to have a switching card, an energy to retreat the the Evil Tall and the Lysander. So it means he has to have more cards to pull off the the win. Um, but he had the switching card and the Lysander, so he won. So, <laughs> so off the end of two, but yeah, one end of two draws the Sycamore, and the other end. To two draws the via seeker for Lysander for game. So, you know, what are you going to do? Um, but yeah, that was it. And uh, lost in top eight, unfortunately. I think it's a favorable matchup for me. I'd say it's like 65 35, probably. Um, you know, I beat every other Turbo Dark I played against. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, and Chris ended up going on to win the tournament. So big congrats to him. He was a really nice guy. So, um, yeah. There you go. That's the that's the tournament. Yeah. Well, still, congratulations on top eight. That's still fantastic. Yeah, appreciate it, so. man. Yeah, yeah. Felt so, good. Uh, I guess my first question about your deck is why did you decide uh, the Jolteon over the metal version? You sure, talked yeah. about some about like you didn't have an answer for Glaceon and Red Ice, and the metal version right. did, but this one didn't, so why? So I like the Jolteon for the flash ray option against Evil Tall Garbodor. You know, Evil Tall kind of fell off at Dallas, didn't have any good placements, but I was expecting it to kind of make a comeback, like resurgence here at this tournament. And it was pretty well represented in day one. There was a lot of good players playing it. Um, mm. I only played against Terry. He was the only Evil Tall I played against. But Jolteon's good in that matchup specifically, and they can parallel city garb you, which is really hard to deal with. So I wanted an out there. Um, and just right now, like, I didn't expect Rainbow Road to be big, um, which is one of the reasons to play the metal version is for the promo Magirna. Um, and I didn't expect Red Eye stuff to be that big, but it was actually like a lot of pretty good players played it. Like Ross Cotham played it, and Pablo Tablemon played it, um, and like, obviously Grant did well with it. And there was a couple others in day two, so um, I wasn't expecting it to be that big. So, um, but I still have an out to it with the Flash Ray. Like we can have the stalemate there, kind of, and they've usually had to dig a little bit more. Um, and if I start flash rang, they're usually going to have to bench something else. So, and also just Jolteon with free retreat is just really good just to have as an option that is like a, um, free retreater, you know, and it's hoop searchable. So yeah, that's why I went with Jolteon. So, okay. Now in your list, you did play the one Olympia. Did you ever that's really right. use it or did you? Oh like, yeah. Yeah. Just in case I could not play the deck without Olympia. I mean, I, not, I can't think of like a specific time in this tournament, but just like I've played it a bunch, and there have been times where it's like late game if I had the Dragonite Pokemon back, and then they um, all my float stones are gone, and they lost into that Dragonite, and I have to commit three energies to try to retreat that thing. Yeah, I wouldn't go into like especially a big tournament like that. I mean, I'm not. I'm just gonna play it safe and play the Olympia. Um, I can't think of like a specific instance where it was that crucial, um, but the healing on it is definitely nice too. Um, and against, so against Mega Gardevoir, so Caleb, so I, I played Caleb round five and he actually played it super smart and he was playing Absol kind of as a, um, as a counter to the Gyarados that was really hyped up. Mm-hmm. Um, but it worked out for him in our matchup as well. So he damages one Mega Ray and then 
the next turn he can Absol and put 30 damage on another Mega Ray so that later on he can, to like win the game, he can clear his whole bench, hit for 190, 190 plus 30 is enough to KO a Mega Ray. It's like perfect math, so like the yeah. game winning knockout kind of deal. Trying to set that up, um, but um, so like just having healing in general for something like that is pretty nice, I think. So, yeah, I was, yeah, I was thinking about like the Grant Manley game uh, when you're like split versus like Red Eyes, you like yeah, did, yeah, did exactly. you Olympia like at all against that or no? Yeah, I, I'm sure I probably did. Yeah. It's all a blur at this point, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like being able to Olympia from one Jolteon to the other one and then just retreating back into the other one that you were attacking with, so stuff like that. that seems Definitely, really cool. it's nice. Yeah. So uh, would you make any changes to your list, or do you think it's, like, solid from over the weekend? Um, I played it the next day at the League Cup, and um, the only card I changed is I took out the fourth... Like, the whole day, I like I was, like, talking about how I didn't really need the fourth Ray. Um, I, just, I, play, I was kind of scarred because um, at the ARG... I played the same deck and won the ARG Charlotte tournament a few... Like, a month ago or so. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was playing a metal version then. But in I was playing against Nathan Brower in the finals, who's also a really good player. Um, but he, um, but in our game three of the finals, I prized two baby rays. So I was like kind of scarred from that. Like, okay, I've got to have all these. Uh, but you know, I, <clears throat> I probably that was the flex spot, like the fourth ray. I definitely w- could see that being um, like a second super rod, maybe or like an. Es- I, and what I cut it for at the league cup is I cut it for an escape rope, which was pretty nice. Um, so yeah, I think Lysander is probably the best card in the deck, and so like escape rope is kind of like a pseudo Lysander in some instances. So sure. I like that, that. Yeah, but there are so many times like in the tournament where I, my opponent ends me to two, and all I need is a Lysander for the game, and I just would rip the Lysander, and there you go. So yeah, MVP of the weekend is Lysander. <laughs> I try I to tell everybody play two Lysander deck. I promise. Oh, dude, really, you have really to. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some people go down to, like, another weird thing about my deck, so a lot of people will play, like, three Sycamore and then just one in and one Lysander and all these, like, really thin counts of supporters and try to cram puzzle a time in the deck. And that just makes it so inconsistent. I, like, really, I really hate puzzles in the deck, to be honest, because, it like, you just get them in your opening hand and then they're useless, and then you have to, like, Ultra Ball one away, and then you're, like, that's one less option later in the game. Like, they're great late game, for sure, but just uh, early consistency, um... So yeah, uh, I would. The only cha- big change I would make um, would be cutting the ray for the rope. I could also see that spot being a Pokemon Ranger, just to have more of an out to the the Regice type decks. So, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I think it's pretty solid as it is. Okay. So, um, how many championship points are you at right now? I know you won the ARG tournament, and that didn't have any yeah. points, unfortunately. But I don't know if, how many you have. Yeah, yeah. Besides that, yeah. It feels weird, like, winning a tournament, and then I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, that doesn't get me any closer to Worlds, so. Um, but, yeah, after this weekend, I, I actually really didn't have any championship points coming into this weekend. I had a league challenge first and a second, so 27 points coming into the weekend, so not a lot, still a long way to go, um, but, so after this weekend, I got the top eight at regionals and top eight at the League Cup the next day, so that's 100 points right there, and the... Points from the cup will replace my second place league challenge, so 115. I'm pretty sure if that's correct math. So, still a long ways to go. I've got um, you know three more cups I'm gonna get, try to go to this month. So hopefully I can get um, some better finishes there. Um, but this tournament was like the deciding factor of like if I'm gonna pursue my invite or not. I, I said going in like if I don't day two, that's it. I'm not. I'm just gonna go to like local tournaments the rest of the year. Um, so made it to top eight. So I'm gonna get to go to <laughs> Collinsville and Virginia most likely for regionals. So yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, I'd st- I, if I was in your spot, I'd still go. How many uh, regionals have you been besides this one? I went to Florida, mm-hmm. and right before the tournament, I changed decks last second. I was I had Raichu Bats planned for the tournament, like it's all I'd been testing for the most part, and um, I think it would have been a much better play. But I ended up going with Mew Evil Tall, which I think was okay, but um, I was less comfortable with the deck, and so I'm sure I made a few mistakes throughout the day that kind of cost me there. Um, so yeah, I didn't do well there, and then I went to Philadelphia, and on the way up, like I. Rarely go into the uh, like the day before a tournament knowing exactly what I'm gonna play. So on the way on the way to the tournament, um, it was in the car. It was me, um, Alex Wilson, Blaine Hill, 
Um, Eddie Satavi or Carl, uh, as his name says, he's, he shout out to him as well. He also got uh, top four at the regional, so um, really cool for him. And then Grant, uh, and that was the five of us in our car going up to Philadelphia, and we were like just talking and. Blaine and I kind of came up with the idea for this weird car bank deck with max potions and focus sashes. And uh, then Eddie like came in and Grant like told us like uh, we were like talking about playing some healing cards. We were like, yeah, let's play two max potion. And Grant was like, no, play four max potion. And they like just can never do anything to you. And we we're like, oh, that's a great idea. And we'll play puzzle of time because you can Karina for it and all this stuff. And um, so Eddie and I played it. Uh, the next day, but our list was really, really bad, and I think the way it stood, you couldn't... Like, I played against four Evil Tall in that tournament, and um, the way the deck... We, like, we didn't have Magnetic Storm in the deck, and Magnetic Storm just, come, like, completely makes the, like, makes the deck so much better against Evil Tall. Um, completely swings the matchup, so... Um, yeah, I did bad there, unfortunately, because it was a suboptimal list. Like, we were playing Halucha and stuff, because, you know, Halucha, 60 for 1 energy seems so good, mm -hmm. but... Um, there's really no instance that you really need it in that deck, so, but yeah, there you go. I mean, at least that, like, evolved into, like, Sam Chin's Russell. Yeah, Lepar's, yeah, yeah, like... that was awesome. Yeah, Grant and I, uh, we went to the, <laughs> the ARG tournament in Richmond, and we told Russell about it and told him, like, this deck is broken, like, you have to play this at San Jose, because the next expanded tournament that I could have possibly gone to was Collinsville, and that's, um, you know, Sun Moon Legal, so the format's completely different. So I was like, this is the last chance for this deck to have a, have a chance, and so I told Russell to play it. He, like, wasn't so sure about it, and then he, you know, ultimately decided on it, and we talked about the deck, and, you know, he gave it to uh, Jeremy Jalen and Sam Chin, and so, yeah, they got, they all three day two'd with yeah. it, so I was really, really glad to see that uh, they did well with it, and, you know, Russell made some good changes to the list we had, and, uh, but yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> it was cool to see it do well. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, like I said, congrats on top eight. And uh, yeah, congrats thanks, on the AG win as well. So that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do you want to give me a shout out to anybody before we head out? Uh, yeah, I'll shout out my, my testing group. I've said their names a bunch, but uh, uh, Blaine Hill and Grant Manley, Eddie Satavi, Alex Wilson, Oliver King, and uh, Chris Watkins, all the local guys here in uh raleigh um so shout outs to them and there's a bunch of other people you know thanks to everybody who like came up and said hey to me and like congrats like as while i was doing so well at the tournament um but yeah there's too many people to name probably that i would want to say but yeah there you go all right man well uh, thank you so much for doing the interview i really appreciate yeah. it and uh good thanks luck for having me on speaky yeah no problem and uh <laughs> collinsville is expanded that's right so. yeah with sun moon legal so uh, i don't know i, I actually just yeah, yeah, kind of. I don't know. <laughs> I I was just like kind of toying around with some ideas today, and I, it seems like like Desi the decidui like that card is broken, man. It's so good. I, I'm gonna try to make that probably that'll probably see its way into the, whatever deck I end up playing. But, uh, we'll I mean, see what happens. If Kingdra Prime is broken, uh, just yeah, imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do two instead of one now every turn. We'll yeah, see how that goes. Seems, seems good. Seems good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you once again for doing the interview. I really appreciate yeah. it. And uh, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you're learning something new about Mega Arquaza Jolteon Giratina and how strong it is. Uh, but thanks for watching. Have a great day. Alrighty. Bye. Alright guys, I just want to give a quick shout out to our three sponsors, Six Cards, Yeti Gaming, and the Pokemon Company International. Links to everything will be down below in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Alrighty.